Howdy once again, it's Tubal Cain, and welcome back to my What Makes It Work series, and this is episode number 14, entitled The Turn Signal Flasher. Now, every car since the early 50s has uh, turn signals on it, required by law, and of course it's a necessity for safety. But uh, what actually makes that flasher work? Now, in some of the brand new cars, it's going to be all electronic, but I'm going to show you the way it was, since I do older technology, with the thermal type flasher. But first, let's take a look inside this car. Normally the actual flasher right here is mounted someplace under the dash, often on the fuse panel, but that'll, that will certainly vary with manufacturers. But because of my hearing uh, problems, I mounted, I rerouted it and uh, mounted it right here so that I can hear it. Now these are also available in the extra loud, but it didn't happen to work on this car. I ordered one and it was the wrong one, but this I can hear even over the road noise and, and I can feel it clicking now. Now I'm not going to talk at all about the switch here and the, the stock and that, but we of course have a right and a left and then we have the four-way flasher, but uh, inside of the steering column there is a switch and it's self-canceling and all of that and, and I've had many of those apart on Chevrolets because they failed regularly so you had to take the steering wheel off and the little plastic parts were uh, were broken and had to be replaced with another Delco part. And I sure changed a lot of those, but I think they've improved that now because this old car never did have a problem. But if uh, all of those old men in uh, southern Florida would mount one on the dash of their Lincoln Town car, they wouldn't be perpetually driving around for the early bird special at 3 o'clock in the afternoon with a flasher flashing. And I'm talking about the old, those old men that are wearing plaid Bermuda shorts, striped shirts, and are clenching their rotten teeth around a soggy cigar. Here's a selection of flashers that I've had uh, sitting in the garage for some time. And you'll see these in all varieties, but most of them have two prongs on them for American cars. And usually they're a little uh, metal can, and that's what helps uh, echo the noise and make them uh, loud enough to where you can hear. But some of them are plastic. And then uh, this is the loud one that I bought, but it didn't work on that other car. But notice that it's an extra large canister, and I suppose that is what made it uh, loud. I'm not sure of that, really. but uh, So I've taken several of these apart, and... Uh, these are thermal flashers, and I'm going to tell you how that, that works, but I took the cover off of several different ones here so that we can examine them. And even though they're different manufacturers, they seem to be similar in, uh, in theory on the way they work. I've made a little uh, experimental setup here on the workbench in the basement, and I've just got a 12-volt battery, and it's connected with uh, a little knife switch, so I don't have a right and a left, that just turns it on and off, and then the uh, you follow the wire here, and all my connection, it goes into one side of the light, comes out the other way, other side, goes through the flasher, and back into the other uh, pole of the battery, and Polarity does not matter at all here for my little setup. But when I throw the switch here, the Frankenstein knife switch, the flasher starts. And perhaps you can hear it. I can certainly feel it. Let me get a little closer here and see if you can hear it. So this is nothing more than a little switch, is all it is, that's opening and closing due to a small metal strip that is uh, changing shape. So let's look at the inside of one of those. I'm going to disconnect this uh, fully assembled one here, set it aside, and it is slightly warm, not, not very, but I mean you can feel that there's some warmth to it. And hook up the other one here. Now let's see what we can see. 
Let me zoom in on that. Now in this close-up view, remember that there's just two contacts on the bottom and uh, this one here comes in to, the, to this side of the switch. This is just a switch and the other one to the other side. But right here there is a very small heating element. It's just a resist, resistive coil right there and that will heat up and then right here is a piece of spring steel and it's curved ever so slightly but when it's heated up it will straighten out and close the contacts and that's the little switch right here they're just two little contacts right in there now once it makes contact then the current flows through there and goes to the turn light but it very quickly cools off and straightens out again or curves again rather and uh, then uh, it heats up again, cools, so it's opening and closing, heating and cooling. That's all there is to it. It's rather intricate and delicate, but uh, it's about $5 worth, I think. Perhaps in this view you can see that there's a slight curvature to that uh, piece of spring steel. And I checked it with a magnet, that is steel. You can see the little coil there. Now watch what happens when I throw the knife switch. You see how it is straightening out? And when it straightens out, there's a little contact. I can point to it right there. Well, I can barely see it. That's the actual switch right there. You see it opening and closing. And when it opens and closes, of course, the light is flashing. Now when I touch the little coil here, ooh, too hot to touch. So it's heating and uh, cooling very rapidly. And of course it's making that clicking sound when it does that. But when there's a cap on here, it's going to be louder, but that isn't connected properly now, so it's not going to have uh, the, uh, the little echo that the can gives it. Now let's take a look at one that's built just slightly differently. This one's made by a different manufacturer, and instead of having a little coil, the heating element is this straight piece here, and I suppose maybe it's a piece of nichrome, I don't really know. For sure but uh, this one is not in operating condition but with the light right here next to it you can see that when I straighten the spring out I'm opening and closing opening and closing the circuit I can feel a slight clicking in my fingers but I cannot hear it, it is not audible but that's all there is to a thermal flasher. I put my extreme close-up macro lens on and you can see from this view that the uh, steel is straightening out and then returning to its curved position with the resistive coil and of course you can't tell that the coil is heating up. And then on the other side the switch opening and closing, opening and closing, ad infinitum. This is yet another flasher here and this one's made by Wagner and uh, I've shown you uh, three different manufacturers actually but you can see that the little resistive coil there is, is slightly different in appearance. And I've left the little can attached here and I will close it if I can. Department of Transportation. And that includes this, concludes this video on uh, turn signal flasher, resistive uh, thermal flasher. 
hope this explains to you what's going on under your dash and what's been making that clicking sound all these years. And this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.